Shit. Yeah, well, I was listening today and I was ready to, to get you, like I said, but one of these days. One of these days. Well, welcome to episode seven, week nine. Yeah. You know, Miss uh, Teach isn't here either. Actually, she was not. She's not here? She's not here right now, yeah. The what? Let's party! Yeah, <laughs> well, she'll be back in an hour. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. She's Boom. working with me on Wednesday, whatever, with, with Heather, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, so Heather got her up. <laughs> so we can be loud and shit. Right. right. I'm gonna take off my shirt, yeah. prance around. Yep. I'm gonna like fart. And you guys are gonna miss a good one. Yep. So I, I, as he said, fart. I moved in the chair, coming in noise. <laughs> I was like, no, that wasn't me. No, we didn't really start. Okay, <laughs> Miss Teach isn't here. We can do whatever right. Man. So pretty, pretty chill week. Can't complain. Leading up to today. You know what? I got um. Miss Teach got a call today, and guess what payment got dispensed today? We'll be getting a check in 10 days or so for the insurance money. Woo! High five on that okay. one. Well, yeah. Man. Yes. And Finally. it was more than what, you know, I was all pissy about the greed payment that I kind of shelled away from or whatever. It's more than that agreed payment that I was just going to let them pay. So These people? Yeah. They finally came through? Yeah, they didn't, but their insurance oh, did. Oh, okay, they, okay. Because eventually the guy said, well, if, they don't, if we don't hear from them next week, you know, today, last week, they're like, you get the payment, you know. And they didn't because they're garbage trash people, so they don't want to <laughs> talk to anyone. So he called us today and said, yeah, we're, you know, you should get it in 10 days, 7 to 10 days, and uh, if not, give us a call back and we'll do it again. So, right. Keep sending And up. what I was saying, though, was that it, we were just going to let them pay 400 and we were just going to pay the rest. We were like, just because just we're Cut the losses. And yeah. Um, it's 500 and they're in turn. So it was a good thing that we went through this route because we got more than yeah. we would have got out of them. And it, you know, it was $500. Yeah, so, so fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels good. So bad things don't happen to good people. Yeah. That's actually just, not a thing, but yeah. <laughs> everything plays out. Yeah. Everything, it, everything it works out. in my favor this time. So that's, that's nice. Yeah, man. Yeah. And so the good thing is your premium is probably going to go up. They're probably. If not canceled. Because yeah, I kept like, thinking they probably don't want to talk to anyone because they're probably buying on their. Yeah. So they're probably doing radio evasion. They're probably multiple accounts of insurance fraud on that. And, uh, <laughs> So they're going to get what's coming to them. Yeah. So for it's very sad. Doing man. that. So that's a jerk of the week from episode one. That's Finally, a joke. yeah, take care of. Yes. <laughs> Nine weeks fucking later. We're going to check these people off. The system works, y'all. <laughs> Just very slowly. <laughs> they listened to the episode. They realized all the shit we talked, and so yes, we I'm finally sure, got the payback. I'm sure the claims adjuster is an avid listener. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? So. And he said, you know, I'm going to write this wrong. <laughs> he case. listens every week to make yes, sure if they yes. corrected themselves. Yeah. He said, that's enough is enough. I'm sure that's what happened. And I appreciate it, Mr. Adjuster. Very much so. Thank you. Thank you kindly. Nice. <laughs> yes. So he's the he's the honorary hero of the show. Hero of the show. That's nice. right. Nice. Yep, yep, nice. Yep, yep, yep. Well, congrats on that. I'm very appreciate happy it. for you. Yeah, very happy. Too. Too. I'm just excited. Uh, I'm just looking forward to this weekend. It's finally the big wrestling weekend. Been waiting oh, that's for. right. So, um, we're what going to be, that, Sunday? it's, um, we're Friday. We have the bullet club thing. And then Saturday we're going to WWE in Houston. Mm. And, um, we had two extra tickets because oh, my, I saw that. my supervisor from 21st century, when we went to the Royal Rumble back in January to make a long story short, she bought a uh, balcony seats cause she bought last minute, like maybe a week or two before the actual event. Mm. Well, the Alamo dome sold those tickets, sold it to hundreds of people. And the Alamo Dome? At the Alamo Dome, yeah, because it was at the... It was Here? At the, yeah. I thought that it's in Houston. No, I'm talking about back in January. Oh, okay. Yeah, so back in January, WWE came to San Antonio for the uh, the pay-per-view, the Royal Rumble. Uh-huh. And so, um, and so, yeah, they... Because they were advertising it's going to be 67,000 people, which it were, but they closed off the top balcony part. They uh-huh. just closed it off for some reason. Well, I think they closed it off because they have a giant WrestleMania sign... And yeah. at the end, it spins fireworks and all this stuff, uh, so they probably didn't want people I'm blinded sure and stuff. exactly what was going on. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. So they blocked it off, but my supervisor, my old supervisor and stuff, 
they bought tickets for that seat, but when they got upstairs, everything was closed off. They couldn't get to the seats. So it turned into this big old dispute. You know, I didn't know this was going on until the next day when I saw her at work. Um, but they yeah. gave her another seat for that. Yeah, they gave them they gave them oh, seats that were open oh. throughout the the venue. Uh huh. And so, and then like, and then they were told because some like WWE representative, like WWE, like apologized this way, saying the neck you so we'll give all of you like free tickets to the to one WWE event of your choice, ex- oh. excluding WrestleMania. Like they're like no WrestleMania. Right. right, right. They're like no, that one's too big. Three D like, picks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's like, but any event you want, you get free tickets for. Like, and it was like 100, 200 something people. So that's a bunch of free tickets WWE wow. is giving out. So Shalay, that's her name. She's not a huge wrestling fan. She went for her kids, and so but she knows how big I was, and so she was someone. I was like, oh, that's dope, and this, this, and that, and then. Um, closer to my birthday back in October, she said, Hey, I still have those free tickets. If you want them, you can have them. Cause my son's kind of outgrowing wrestling already. Like he's already <laughs> sick of it. And I was like, how old is he? Uh, I think he's, was that like a dig? He's in seven, he's in sixth grade. Oh. No, she was like, I guess he just got sick of it. Right, and I was right, just right, like, right. okay. And so, um, so with, with this weekend, so a couple weeks ago, I was, I was like, Hey, I was like, well, if you still have those tickets, I really like to go to, you know, NXT. So she she talked to that guy, still had his number, so she was like, Yep, yeah, here you go. So just no no, this is your one event. Nice. Okay, whatever. So she gave me four tickets. And so she thought she was only gonna get three, but she got four. Wow. So I wanted to go with my dad. Oh, for her whole family. Yeah. And they gave her like a four pack. Yeah, they gave her a, like a family four pack deal uh-huh. type thing. And so she gave them to me. It was gonna be me, Leslie, my dad, if he if he was able to go, and like somebody else, dad can't go. Then it was gonna be Leslie's dad and her little brother. Last minute, they couldn't go. Uh, so we were like, shit, it's the week of. We have to find somebody to go with. I really hate these tickets to go to waste. Right. Even though we got them for free. Right. So posted something on Facebook, Twitter, and everything. I was like, hey, got two free tickets. Should have scalped them. Well, I didn't <laughs> want to be a dick because they were free. Yeah. And it says WWE comp on them. Uh, so I didn't want to try getting in trouble for anything. Right, like, right. Hey, I'm and selling. And they take yours away, too. Yeah. yeah. And then we went to Houston for nothing. Right. So I was like, hey, I have two extra tickets. And so um, Jesus and Anna. You met them at... Oh, yeah. Went to Woodrow. Yeah. He used to watch wrestling back in the day. Uh-huh. Anna, not so much. And so he was like, well, hey, if you guys don't have anyone to go with, we'll go with y'all. And we're like, okay, cool, yeah, let's go. And so, man, he he's, he's an honorary hero, too, because he... We were just going to go up that day, leave that night, like, right after the event. Man, he got us a hotel. Oh, like, shit. he got a comp hotel. So we're going to go up there together, spend the night. How did you get a comp hotel? His dad. His dad oh, has the hookup. Nice, so nice. So we're going to go up there. I thought even like he went and talked to WD and got off. Oh, I was like, sure. yeah, that's pretty good. So right? Like, so, is he not the lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> right? So it's like, so it's like, yeah, so we're going to go up there. We're going to spend the weekend in Houston. And it's like, damn, we're going to be all. That's a setback, but, you know, because Houston sucks. But <laughs> but that'll be fun. Sounds fun. I'm going to roll up in there <laughs> blasting Paul Wall. Oh, and... God. <laughs> <laughs> Zero, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, so excited oh, for cool, that weekend. Cool, cool. That sounds fun. What about you? Any plans for the weekend? What's going on? Uh, what's okay? <laughs> I mean, there's always, you know what? <laughs> it's gonna be a nice little Saturday. Um, we're gonna go to Lowe's. Or, no, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> what is that? Uh, what's that movie? Uh, old school. Have you seen with Will Ferrell? I've seen parts of it a long movies. time ago. Anyways, I talk too much about movies on this podcast. No, you so, <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, no, we have a, we're doing a venue tour on Saturday. Oh, that, you were talking we're about that last week. We're doing a venue tour um, at 10.30 in the morning. Fuck you. I know. Which is sleeping in, though, because I get up at 5. But ten, So 10.30, I have a council meeting, because I'm, I'm on the council for Shambhala. I'm actually at Shambhala a weekend, I think, because then I have a training on Sunday, because I'm trying, I'm becoming... I don't know if they call it a council. I don't know. Council. <laughs> like, leading the shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So, so I'll be at Shambhala all weekend. So. I'll check you out. Go be like, teach, teach, yeah, teach. Yeah, yeah. Come on by. Anyone can come to Shambhala. Uh, it's just a meditation center. Yeah, mm-hmm. Check it out. San Antonio. Every time you say Shambhala, I always think of... Um, the music festival. The music festival. Yeah. Because um, one of my favorite DJs, he comes out with a mix every year called the Shambhala Mix. Uh. And it's like this, like hour, two hour mix of like all the biggest tracks that are going on the headbanging world. And it's they, like... so there's three things with Shambhala. There's uh, Shambhala, the Buddhist lineage. There's Shambhala, the music and just the music festival. And then there's Shambhala publications, which until very recently I thought they were the same as the Shambhala Buddhist lineage because they mm-hmm. do all the books. 
all the books behind you there, uh-huh. they have a... See that little red? Just pick a book. This one right here? Not that one. That one. This one. So see that right here? Shambhala Pokemon? Shambhala, case? yeah. So all of those, these are all Buddhist books. They're all Buddhist. So I thought they were, and they all, they do all the same Buddhist monks that are in Shambhala. But they have no association, actually, with the Buddhist lineage. They are just, they just publish all the books. So meanwhile, I thought I was buying all these books supporting Shambhala Buddhist lineage. But it's still, it's still, they still cover the books. But that one's interesting. It's called yeah. the, the Buddha Walks in the Bar. The author actually signed it, um... May your keg stands be mindful. <laughs> May all your keg <laughs> stands be mindful. Nice. Anyways, um... This is a nice little quote. Being on the spot, even if it hurts, is preferable to avoiding. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's nice. Sounds good. Yep. There was nice little tidbits today. Yeah, yeah that is cool. Um, Austin and London. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's about it. Oh, yeah, I see it now. Yeah, I see all of them. Right. I, right. So they have... They actually have no... Smile and fear. Oh, Shambhala. And Shambhala, actually, the word is actually... Um, you ever heard of Shangri-La? The country? Shangri-La is actually... A, well, I, I don't I think... I sounded so dumb. <laughs> I was thinking of Sri Lanka. <laughs> Sri Lanka, yeah. Shangri-La is actually like a utopia. It's like kind of like mm. a heaven, more or less. Um, the the p- pure land, I guess you could say, or whatever. Shambhala is kind of a deviation of that word, but in t- Tibetan. And it's just a... It's kind of like Buddhist heaven, but not really because we don't have a heaven. But it's like a completely enlightened society, and um, mm-hmm. so that's where the word Shambhala comes from. So okay. that's why the music festival takes it. It's a Buddhist term, uh, same Sweet. with the books, and then obviously the lineage itself. Right. right? But we, we don't have... That word's older than this lineage. So. For sure, yeah. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> the lineage is pretty ancient, but... Mm-hmm. Cause yeah, cause every time you say that, I just think throw your ex up. Like I just think like that's all his <laughs> Wait, stupid little things. Yeah, cause like that's like his Shambhala mixes, and he's always headlining that fucking oh. festival. And oh, okay. It was like <laughs> that's funny. Was, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's yeah. just that's just me. That's my brain. <laughs> your connotation with the with Shambhala. That's yeah, funny. but at least I knew it was. No, I like it. Yeah, see, it's out there. So okay. I'm early today, but. I need a break. <laughs> you need a break? All right. Yeah. No problem. So when we get back, we'll go ahead. We'll go ahead and do uh, the teach a smoke break. And get back, we'll go into a drink of the week. Woo. 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 You're the jerk, jerk, jerk of the week. You're a jerk and it's your week. You really outdid yourself. Like a crazy super jerk. You're probably a big jerk every week. But this week, you're the jerk of the week. All right. All Jerk of the week. All right. A favorite amongst our listeners. Fan favorite. <laughs> you know what? Um, we haven't had a cheers yet tonight. Oh, so. cheers. Cheers to episode seven. Good shit. All right. All right. My jerk of the week is actually, I'm going to keep her name out, but <laughs> my coworker. What are my no, coworkers? Like coworkers. Who I have on my Facebook, but I don't think she listens, so we're good. <laughs> she'll know if she ever listens to this. Um, I love her to death. She's a, she's, she's a great human being, but... A jerk. A jerk. <laughs> so, I am a file clerk for an intellectual property law firm. And all I do is just do the filing. I just update files, this and that. And the way law firms work is there's lawyers. You know, the partners, the lawyers. <clears throat> they have a paralegal, which is kind of like a nurse. So, you think of people more connotative with doctors, nurses, right? Mm-hmm. Um, lawyers have paralegals that, uh, take care of, you know, all the, all the bolt shit, you know, they type up all their stuff and this and that and whatever. And the lawyer kind of signs off. Anyways, I do the filing. So I work under the paralegals and my job is to just file the way they tell me to file. I know generally how to file things, but some things I have to ask if they look different or whatever, you know, people have preferences. Yeah. So that's my job. Um, this coworker, she's a paralegal. Love her to death, again. Can't stress it enough. She's a great person. But with the job, when she she just came, she's worked for them a long time ago, actually. So when I started, she didn't work there. And uh, the girl that used to work for this lawyer became the office manager. So they asked her, because she kind of knew more or less the system and how they work, to come back and fulfill the position. And she did. But things have changed. So it's kind of different for her and blah, blah, blah. So what she likes to do is when she gets 
when the lawyer gets upset, and lawyers get upset a lot because they're stressed and it's just a stressful kind of job and environment. Mm-hmm. So they kind of do take it out on their paralegals. Um, and when she messes up, she likes to tell the lawyer that it's my fault. <laughs> oh, wow. And this has happened a few times now. And the thing is, is that I don't have a voice in this because I don't talk to lawyers at all. Mm-hmm. They only know me as a file clerk. They just know of me. Yeah, and they just know teach. They just know the teach, yeah, that does the filing. And it's very easy for her to just say, oh, well... Teach did it. You know, sorry about that. I guess he didn't know what he was doing. When, the, the truth of the matter is, I only do things that they tell me. Like, right. I only do it the way they tell me. So this week, uh, again, I'm not there every day anymore now because of my school schedule this semester so i'm not even there to defend myself either so when shit hits a fan it's very very easy for her to just go oh yeah it was him right <laughs> which is what she did so that makes it the trick of the week nice um this particular incident was a certain file you know it gets hole punched and put in file she wanted this particular file she told me specifically oh don't worry about hole punching i just want it loose so i can get to it quicker Mm -hmm. okay that's fine that's what you want your preference i will do that for you it's my job well when he got the when the lawyer got the file he was like what the hell why none of this is in order and it's not hole punch and it's not put together and she said oh i don't know what the hell the peach is doing (laughs) oh and so what really sucks is that nothing was really gonna happen i'm not gonna lose my job over it um what sucks though is that this lawyer (laughs) who Pays my bills, thinks I'm not doing my job. Basically, right. it's really just the end. All of that is he thinks I'm not doing my job, which yeah. I am. So, so that you're the jerk. <laughs> yeah, you're a jerk. And she does it kind of often. So she's. Oh, this is not the first oh, time, which really sucks. And I can make a big deal about it, but mm. I'm not gonna be there forever. So right. I'm kind of like, right. eh, I don't. You're gonna be a teach. Yeah, so. I don't. I, I don't care that much. But for this purposes, yeah, I care. Yeah, you're the jerk. Mm. For me, I have a potential jerk. Jerks, plural. Oh, potential. So I ordered, because I just got my iPhone, and so everyone's been giving me shit that I don't have a, a case on it, which yeah, I don't really, I don't carry cases. I was like, I know how to take care of my stuff, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I've never had a broken phone, I never, I've never broken or shattered any iPod or MP3 player. Have you always thing. had iPhones? Um... Yeah, when my my first real phones, like not my little cricket phones or my pocket phones. Do you remember Pocket back oh, in the yeah. day? Yeah, yeah. I was like, I just had like when I first started buying my own phones and everything. Yeah, I've been I've always been I, iPhone. The Samsung where we started the show with when we record on. And that was the first time I ever had a Samsung or a Galaxy, and I made the switch back to the iPhone eight plus because I wanted something bigger uh, to feel uh, manly. Sure. Um. So, um. So everyone's been giving me crap about it, and so I was like, okay, fine, whatever. I'll order a case. So I ordered a case, and then um, I ordered it last week, before the episode, actually, before we were filmed, and it said, okay, it'll arrive by, it'll arrive by Friday, November 17th. Okay, that's this Friday. Not too bad. I was like, about a week long. Okay, whatever. So I don't know why, but I was like, hey, well, let me check the status of the shipment. It said it delivered Monday, November 13th. Okay. So I was like, okay. I was like, so then it must be in the mailbox. Let me go ahead and go check it. Got to the mailbox, nothing was in there. Where'd you order this off again? Walmart.com. Okay. And I was like, hmm. And I was like, it's a, just one phone case. It should be small enough to fit in there. There was no little ticket from the office that said, hey, there's a package there at the front. Mm-hmm. Pick it up. So I was like, hmm, okay. So like, that's strange. So then I'm walking back to the apartment, you know, because the mailbox is right behind Teach's place. So I'm walking back to the apartment, and I'm like, well, let me go back on the little thing and check it. It says it was delivered to California. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? And like, but then when I went to the actual Walmart app, not the email, it says it was shipped to blah, 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 yeah. like the apartment. So I'm like, what the fuck? And so then, then I reload the page, then the app says to California. And I'm like, what? And then, so then I'm doing more research and this, this, and that. And then I go into the actual FedEx thing, retract the actual package And it shows it was delivered, but it doesn't specify an address. It says my name, and it says it was delivered by 8 p.m. And I'm like, wait, what? On Monday, November 13th? And I was like, that can't be true, because Monday I was at the apartment. Uh I was watching wrestling. I was like, nobody. I was like, I'm sitting on the couch being quiet. Leslie's doing her homework with headphones in. And I was like, I didn't hear anybody knock or come to the door. So then it says, like, oh, it could either be left at the the office 
in the mailbox or just right there at the front door. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, if it's at the office, the jerks of the week are they the office for not telling me. They do that. That's what I'm saying. I've never had a bad experience with that. Usually, or they'll call us and let us really? know that our packages are there. I have ev- I use Amazon, mm-hmm. and I have the Amazon app that tells me when it's delivered. And luckily, they specify uh, at your door, in your mailbox, in the mailroom. And mm-hmm. obviously, I can differentiate which one is which. Exactly. And every time it's in the mailroom, luckily, I know that from my app, but the mailroom has never contacted me about getting really? the package. Ever. I've Man. never gotten... A note on the door or a note in my box. I but when I go, obviously, I'm like I have a package for you know the teach, and they're like, oh, let me check, and like, oh yeah, here it is. They've never, hmm. and I've had them before. I had the app too because I didn't realize the app did notifications like that. Yeah, <clears throat> I would wait, and I'd have to go, ch- and I would wait for long. I would be like, oh, it's gonna be here around then. You know, sometimes you forget about it. Yeah, and then I'm like, oh, what about that thing? Let me see if it was. I never haven't seen it. And I'd go on the app. Uh, and it's like, oh, delivered. I'm like, oh, fuck. Okay, I know where it's at. Because hopefully, hopefully it's there because mm-hmm. I haven't received it. They, they never, I've never gotten a... Yeah, I don't know. Like, um, I remember one time we accidentally left a box uh, in the in the front office for like two weeks. Mm-hmm. And I, I can't remember what it was or if it was my thing or Leslie's thing. But they said, hey, you know, you have a package down here. We're getting ready to return back to sender. Oh. Like, uh, you gotta, cause they, they only hold shipments for so long. Right. So we're like, oh shit, so sorry. Okay, we picked it up. But I haven't received any notification from them because it could be a – it's a, I presume it's a small little package, right. a phone case. Right. So either they haven't seen it or they haven't notified us. So they're possibly jerk of the week. The FedEx person or Walmart.com is a jerk of the week because yeah. they sent it to California for some reason. Right. Or three, my neighbors are jerks. They saw a package and stole it. So I just yeah, don't know that, who my that, specific jerk is. The outside. The outside people. So that's that's my complaint. Man, we call it the compliment of everyone. Not you. Everyone else. <laughs> the compliment is everyone else. Was it you? Yeah. Yeah, I went to your house and actually... Oh, Surprise! <laughs> I have your phone case. I was going to get it again. <laughs> Hold on to that feeling because I don't really have it. So <laughs> right. enjoy that. No! <laughs> so yeah, so that was... I guess that's Jerk of the Week. That's Jerk of the Week. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah. I'm not really good at re- like <laughs> making a big hoopla because I don't get that mad about shit, but... About that kind of shit? Well, or... no, no, I mean, in, like, the Drink of the Week segment. I, I listened to this other podcast, shout out to The Read. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's called The Read because uh, reading someone is, you know, you read them, like, it's like, um, you're giving them shit, like, you're, like, so you're reading them. How do you explain that? For filth? You, yeah, you, you know, so you know the connotation of, like, reading someone. Okay? Yeah. Some people may not know that. Um, who cares? So, who cares? So their show is obviously, they have a read every, um, this is, which kind of is why I have a jerk of the week. It kind of reflects that, but they're really good about getting into it and like really passionate, like long freaking reads. And I don't know. I can't really do that. <laughs> but <laughs> but so, just to point somebody out. Just to point yeah, just, out, just get it off my chest. Just exactly. hear it from my soul. Yeah. That's why we do these. I still yeah. get excited for these every week. I like, do too. You know, yeah. like, cause it was funny. Cause when you were talking about, um, when you were talking about, like, how some people can, like, get gung-ho about a project and mm. then, like, just drop off about it. Yeah. Um, forgot who I was talking to, but they were, like, don't, like, like, oh, well, like, I know you're taking, like, forever to post the episodes. Like, are you just getting sick of doing it? And I was, like, no, I'm just, I'm getting lazy about posting them. <laughs> I was, like, because it takes so long to, like, uh, render the audio, clip I was out. myself. Yeah, I was like... I, I think only the first episode came out the next day. Yeah, that like, because I was so, like... <laughs> but yeah, the, the other episodes, I will admit, it's not because I don't want to do it. It's just, like... It just tears. I, I was imagine. like... like I'm uh, just glad I don't have to do it, so right? I don't care. Yeah. And that's why I kind of wanted to get a laptop for Black Friday next week. Oh, and so that way I could do it from the... Because we only have the desktop that you've seen is, in oh, the, really? is on the table. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. And so it's, like, and that because it has Windows Movie Maker. Oh, and, you got to get one, then. Yeah. yeah. I mean, not just for this. But just to have a laptop. But just to have one, yeah. That we could jerk off in the bathroom. Right. You know, it really makes sense. Put the laptop perfect. That way I don't yeah. got to position my phone right. And right. You know, and the phones move nowadays. I was like, so I want to be hands getting free. getting vigorous and it starts throwing it out, you know. Or like, I don't want to like move it the wrong way and it goes back to white screen. I want to double hand it, you know. You know. Well, my, I'm, I'm not just, that big to double well, hand. I'm just, just, just to, you know, sometimes just, just want to do it. I just feel like I, you're by yourself. No one's going to know. <laughs> no one's going to say there's not enough meat there, David. Like, I'm going to use two hands. Who gives a fuck, right? <laughs> 
I tell myself just, every time. I just use this right here. <laughs> I just tell myself every time. I'm like, I'm use two hands because why not? I feel that. It makes me feel manly. Yeah. You're doing it and you got yeah. the air all I don't need to, there. but you know. <laughs> Jerk it off, on. Who cares? Yeah, jerk it off. It's always a hot Because Mrs. Teach isn't here, so. Mrs. Teach isn't here. Now that she could, she could hear it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> you said jerking yeah. off is a hot topic? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a big topic on the show. Spicy. Check it out. Yeah. Right? Because everybody really does it, so. Come on. Come on, everybody does it. I hate when I meet someone, they're like, yeah, I don't do that. I'm like, shut up, shut up, shut up. Who, who are you trying to convince? I don't believe it. You're trying to tell yourself, you're trying to make yourself believe you don't drink. Is off? he doing it like. I don't believe you. Like, so. He's jerking off like, I don't, I don't, I don't care this. if you tell me you don't jerk off. I know you fucking jerk off. I remember I it was so huge in like a. Uh, Middle school, or like when people started hitting puberty, like uh, I bet you're jerking off. Oh, no, yeah, 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 I'm not yeah, doing yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Who yeah. does that? That's gross. Exactly, not me. I don't do that shit. It's nasty. I talk about it all the time. <laughs> like I'm just like, man. I was like, dude. I was like, and I was like, man. As soon as my parents leave, <sighs> right? right. <laughs> yeah, lotion um, it up. I was yeah. that kid back in the day where I was like, I don't fucking jerk off. You were that I kid. Mean, oh yeah. Well, I think that was. I mean, you had to. You had to deflect any kind of attention at that age. You know, you just don't want to be talking about anything at that point. <laughs> We're fucking growing as adults. Like, fuck, jerk off. Stop. Stop. Like, stop lying to yourself. You, you know, know how healthy like, it is for you? Like, right. Don't you know the benefits? Like, you're going to shave 10 years added to your life if you jerk off. Like, I remember the first time I jerked off right before I went to bed. Like, I was like, I was like laying in bed. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, mm, okay. Like, all right. <laughs> let me do this. Grab a little sock real quick. What are we talking about? At what age here? Are we talking about yet? Like no, not like ten minutes I, ago. We're like <laughs> no. What I what I was saying when I first discovered was that when you jerk off, it makes you sleepy. Oh, was like one time I was just laying in bed. I think it was in like middle school or high school or something. Uh-huh. Jerked it. Oh, oh. Did you really use a sock? I never used. I never. I well, just did, of, did you I really like, use a sock? Yeah. Was that thing? I never. I know that's a people thing, use like, socks. Yeah. 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 I'm, well, because I was like, I'm not going to... It's, like, it's a rough substance. I don't know. I'm like, I was I'm like, like, I'll put lotion on it, so... It's, yeah. I was like, I'm try it out. But yeah, so <laughs> freaking... A sock. Came, great. and I was like, I remember I was like, oh, man, I'm so tired. Because, like, any other time I would jerk off, <laughs> it would be like, when my parents go to the grocery store, it would be like, five, six o'clock, and I'm like, shit! Oh like... Who listens to this garbage? But <laughs> I listen to it. So. <laughs> Me too. I love it. It's good stuff. I was like, I'll listen to us jerking off anytime. Teach, right. So. Anytime. Anytime. Circle jerks. <laughs> they always. They were. <laughs> what do they call it? On what is it when? Uh, what is it when? Uh, you hold your friend's arm who's holding their dick, so you don't really touch dicks, but you move their arm to jerk each other off. The stranger. No, 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 no. No, no. Oh, the strangers where you make you your arm fall asleep and you're all. That's the stranger, but it's uh, it's from a movie, <laughs> another movie. <right? laughs> the Teach and Joy's movies, if you didn't know. Zach and Mimi make a porno. You oh, I seen that movie Rogan. once. Yeah, and, I don't uh, know what it was called. And it's the character uh, Jay from Jane and Silent Bob. He's an actor in Jason that. Mewes. Yeah, and uh, he's, I don't know. He's he's uh, what's the word? He's asking Seth Rogen's character to to perform this sex act with him, where. They're not jerking off. They're not jerking each other off. They're each holding their own dicks, but they're holding each other's arms so and they're moving <laughs> each other's arms. So, so he's like, it's not gay. I'm just helping another friend. Like, <laughs> I'm not touching your dick. You're touching your dick. I'm touching my dick, but I'm helping you help your dick. Like, I like that thing I where it's like... I'm going to... 3 a.m. I'm going like to wake up and be like, it's called this. And then I'll email you. And, <laughs> and I'll be like, David, I figured out what we can call it. I remember what it's called now. No, man. That's just like... Double Dutch. That's double what it's Dutch. Called. Yes, it's double Dutch. You didn't email me. I wanted to uh, okay, get I'll, the email. Well, I'll I'll do it at three a.m. Just post it on the Facebook page. Double Dutch me. Double Dutch. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do the double. Don't put Dutch. it on four chan. <laughs> then we'll just get tons of we dick pics after that. Hit. That's funny. Well, that was jerking off. That was jerking off. The teach and David Wink thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it got real real there. Yeah. So, segueing from jerking off, which now we're kind of screwed to whatever topic we talk about next is just terrible. Um, <laughs> from jerking off. Uh-huh. So, let's go into consent. So, consent. Oh, huh. well, that's right. That was the next topic, yeah. <laughs> we actually had something. I was, I was going to bring that up before we started jerking around over there. Um, we well, you know what's a good segue from jerking off and consent. Oh. Louis C.K. 
Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Like, right he always there. talks about jerking off, and he's well. Uh, have you heard? He yeah. he um, he agreed. He. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, you did. <laughs> he um he confessed. Mm. He uh I was about to say he agreed again. He they did not agree. The they, women, but damn, what's the word I'm thinking of? He accept no, not accepted. Wait, he masturbated in front of women. He com- he. They accused him, and he didn't deny it. He he actually gave an apology. Yeah. Well, I didn't read his apology though. Was it half-assed like Kevin Spacey? You know what's it's real this this whole. Scenario that actually is bridging from the last episode too is, and just making me think about a lot of things. So I don't really know where I. I think I know where I stand on it, but it, it's very eye opening. But it's terrible. His apology. I read it and thought it was good. I thought it was a. I thought it was an apology. It was a good. Pretty much, he said, you know, I am remorseful. You know, I he he basically said. I was in this. I was in this powerful position, and I abused it. You know, mm-hmm. I knew these women. You know, I, I subconsciously knew these women would not say no, and I took that as consent, which is not good. Yeah, because they didn't say yes or no, but they didn't stop me, and it was because they were scared of my position in the industry and where they were in the industry, and and that's wrong and that's how I took it um but now it's a lot of people are bashing this apology at the way he used his words and the way he said um the way he positioned himself as being higher up was like incorrect too they were like his apology was an apology which when I read that I'm like okay yeah that makes sense too but at the same time I feel like they're poking holes I don't know cause, cause like, well, if, like if he's if he's openly like, admitting like this is what I did like if he's owning up to his mistakes and like and you know did he say sorry or he said he feels you remorseful read, I, let's, you read, yeah read. like look it up and so and so while you're looking that up um we should we should have this shit prepared but um oh well yeah. who cares and um the there is a when you're talking about like this is all eye opening and you know there's a lot of accusations you know coming out left and right every every day there seems to be somebody new that's I and I love Louis. now the last time we talked about Kevin Spacey Kevin Spacey mostly. where again we were like well I wasn't the biggest Kevin Spacey fan anyways I I do enjoy it when I think about thinking fondly of him but okay that sucks Charlie Sheen was kind of like wow I don't I couldn't even imagine that right Louis C.K. I fucking love Louis C.K. I he is my favorite comic um of all time and I never got to see him and I don't think I ever will now because everyone has dropped him his yeah. career is done done yeah um okay you want me to I'll read his I'll read his uh all right, go for it. I'll try to read it quick, too. You're good. All right, ready? <clears throat> Complete statement from Louisa K. I want to address the stories told to the New York Times by five women named Abby, Rebecca, Dana, Julia, who felt able to name themselves and one who did not. These stories are true. At the time, I said to myself that I was that what I did was okay because I never showed a woman my dick without asking first, which is also true. But what I learned later in life, too late, is that when you have power over another person, asking them... Asking them to look at your dick isn't a question. It's a predicament for them. The power I had over these women is that they admired me, and I wielded that power irresponsibly. I have been remorseful of my actions, and I've tried to learn from them and run from them now. And run from them, period. Now I'm aware of the extent of the impact of my actions. I learned yesterday that... I learned yesterday the extent to which I left these women who admired me feeling badly about themselves and cautious around other men who would never have put them in that position. I also took advantage of the fact that I was widely admired in my in their community, which disabled them from sharing their story and brought hardship to them when they tried because people who look up to me didn't want to hear it. I didn't think that I was doing any of that because my position allowed me not to think about it. There is nothing about this that I forgive myself for, and I have to reconcile it with who I am, which is nothing compared to the task I left them with. I wish I had reacted to their admiration of me by being a good example to them as a man and giving them such guidance as a comedian, including because... I admired their work. The hardest regret to Lewis is what you've done to hurt someone else. And I can hardly wrap my head around the scope of hurt I brought on them. I'd be remiss to exclude the hurt that I brought on people who I work with and have worked with whose professional and personal lives have been impacted by all of this, including projects currently in production. The cast and the crew of Better Things, Baskets, The Cops, One Mississippi, and I Love You Daddy. That's his movie that got totally just... Just scrapped. Yeah. I deeply regret that this has brought negative attention to my manager, Dave Becky, 
who only tried to mediate a situation that I caused. I brought anguish and hardship to the people of FX who have given me so much. I love his show on FX. The Orchard, who took a chance on my movie, and every other entity that has be uh, bet on me through the years. I brought pain to my family, my friends, my children, and their mother. I have spent my long and lucky career talking and saying anything I want. I will now step back and take a long time to listen. Thank you for reading. I guess he never does say... I'm like sorry. sorry. Yeah, that's true. Never... And not, yeah, it's like and not to and not to um dismiss what he did, but I think there's a quote that um I believe but not so much to like the whole sexual sexual stuff like that, but it's like, you know, in order for you to in order for you to move on or in order for you to truly become a man, you have to own up for your mistakes. And then um, I, which I really agree to that, which I think that's what he's trying to do right now is he's owning up to it. Mm. It kind of, even though his thought process and that time space and everything wasn't right, but I think that's what he was trying to do to, to say, owning up to, I knew like I had that position of power mm. and I abused it, which is exactly what he did. I guarantee mm. it. I don't know what girls he, you know, did that to, which I don't think that really matters. It well, he says matter. their names. Oh, he does? Abby, Rebecca, Dana, and Julia. Those are four of the five. And apparently they're like, they're comics. They're, oh. but they're not very known comics. You know how like comics bring lesser known comics to like start up the crowd, you know? Yeah. I imagine that's who these people are. Yeah. Either way, it's, it's unforgivable. It's, um, it it's is. terrible. Yeah. Um, but I think that's what he's trying to do is just own up. Instead of saying like, no, I didn't do it or just stay silent on it. I think he's just owning up to it. Um, but it's he just says, like, "I have been remorseful of my actions." I think that's the closest thing to to like I apologize. I like, right. Yeah, I don't know. It's, and even then, it's yeah. like in a past tense kind of thing. That is kind of weird that he says it that way. Mm -hmm. You know, I wonder how many people look through this too, though, before it gets posted. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sure he has publicists and people that are probably illegally making him. Don't say this. Don't say this because it can. I'm sure. Like, yeah, more than likely. I don't know. It just. It, no, I do know. It's horrible. He's that's horrible. Yeah. Um, everything that's happening is a direct result of that, and it is kind of shocking that there was someone brought up about the what is the that Me Too hashtag that came up. Yeah, but, to like show like you know, for people to stand up, for which it, really yeah. just kind of showed like every single woman has kind of felt this way. This kind of yeah. In some yeah. sense of the form. And I guess, I mean, it really... For a guy who doesn't really understand that, it is kind of eye-opening. Like, it is. Much. And there was a post I saw today, actually, while I was uh, taking a dump at work. Um, it was a post. It was like a, it was like in that meme format where, like, I forgot what the picture was. Oh, it was Dave Chappelle when he was dressed up as Dylon when they were doing Making the Band. Uh-huh. And so he was kind of like, like that. And the caption was... I spit hot fire. Yeah, I spit hot fire, man. Where he's all like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. it was like a picture of Dave Chappelle's face, and then on the caption says, "Just the thought." But isn't this kind of creepy? How when Hugh Hefner died, like there's this like like Hugh Hefner like I can't I don't know what word for word, but it's like Hugh Hefner kind of had this force field or this shield over creepy people in Hollywood, and now that he's dead, there's no one to protect them. Of course, it's very far fetched, but I'm like that is kind of weird that after Hugh Hefner died, all this kind of came. Through. All this stuff, and then he, even about Hugh Hefner too, because uh -huh. when Hugh Hefner died, and people were like, "All oh, rest in peace, a legend." This is and that. They're like, "Well, don't you know all these things he did right, to women?" Right. And, the, and then that's when the that's kind of and then the whole Harvey Weinstein thing came out, mm -hmm. and then you know um, Kevin Spacey, some guy from that show, uh, Pretty Little Liars or something, uh -huh. or not Pretty Little Liars. Um, I don't know. It was some some grizzly show. Lot. There's been a lot. Yeah, I mean, like yeah, it's like <coughs> Louis C.K. <coughs> a like, lot. I mean, I don't know. It, this is insane, bro. And I'll share a story where <laughs> it's not my proudest moment, but not to say I mean a woman's life. I'm sure is filled with this, and that that speaks volumes. Not about what any one man can do within this tiny aspect, but how we think of things, how we view women to, it could, it could almost all come down to the consent thing, even as like we were talking, did we talk about that yet? Not yet. Oh, okay. okay. We're getting That's into it, yeah. Consent. Um, so this is why we have to talk, not before, so much before, because I get a mush, but, right. um, I forgot where I was going with this, um, 
Oh no, it's not like you're supposed to be really intense. I know, there's some, those are what fuck in my drink. You know, every time I, uh, the, I think I've said this before, every time we end it, I'm like, fuck, what was I talking about? And like the next, like, you make me stew in it all week because I'm thinking like, what did I talk <laughs> about? Like, what, how stupid do I sound? Well, and I then post, I listen to it and then I'm like, oh, okay, it's not that bad. I don't sound too I bad. Post, I post the original audio in our Google Drive. And you can listen to it from the Google Drive. Oh, okay. If you download the app or even go on it through well, your web browser. Well, I have Google Drive. Yeah, then I, yeah. Post the, I post the audio for the episodes in our Google Drive. Oh, fuck. Okay, I have to do that. Yeah, so that way you can listen to it on your way home, so that way you're not waiting for just the YouTube. Oh, okay. I remember what I was saying. Okay. Okay, so how... Uh, one of the things was, like, a lot of things, too, for women, uh, stuff like this with men in power, it always... A, lot, a big thing is to minimize the embarrassment of the man. That's the thing, too. Women are, like, when this shit kind of, like, this one specifically, like, with Louis C.K., he comes into the room and starts jerking off in front of him, right? Like, it's kind of comedic, but it's not. It's very bad. Yeah. Because, like, when you picture it, you just imagine just... Well, the way he is, does his stand-up, that is... I feel like this is a skit of his, because he has a skit where he talks about being in the elevator with a girl and being like, you're just doing fucked up shit where you're just like, just have, like, a bag of dicks. I just want to stick them in you. Like, that's, like, <laughs> one of his skits, you know? Yeah. Where the, even in the show, the girl's like... He's like, everything okay? And she's like, yeah, I have a bag of dicks and they're not here. <laughs> and that's the episode. Like, anyways, um, so it's to minimize the embarrassment of the man. There's this condition that women have, which is a product of, of our society. Um, I've had that. I was at the, uh, it was a gay bar. You know, there's a strip, the gay bar. Yeah. I was there with Miss Teach and some friends or whatever. Um, and it's fun. I like the gay bars. I, don't, I like them. They're cheap drinks and they're strong. Uh, they're a good time. <laughs> um, anyway, so I think we were like, we're at the bar and it's really crowded. And I'm kind of like doing my thing where I'm like waiting for a drink, but I'm kind of like dancing to Doing music, yeah. Some girl, and I'm right next to Mrs. Teach too. Like she's getting her drinks actually. I always make her get the drinks because the guys are always really straight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they, they like, you know, anyway, they like Mrs. Teach so they take care of her. Um, <clears throat> some girl starts dancing on me, right? Some chick starts dancing on me. And I have never had that really happen to me. Like, uh -huh. I've all, I've been with Mrs. Teach since 17. So I've never been to a club as a single. Like, I've never been at a 21 and up club not yeah. with Mrs. Teach. So I've never had this had, had, uh, interaction where someone's dancing with me and I tell them no. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know what to do because I feel really bad because she had actually been dancing with me. I thought she was just dancing, like, because we're so packed. Yeah. I realize she's dancing, like, on me, more or less. And I was dancing, too, because I was just kind of like... So it's kind of like, okay, So then yeah. I realized, I'm like, oh, fuck. She thinks we're, like, dancing. I don't know what to do. And I feel like it's been just this much amount of time over, like, the awkward thing where it's like, <laughs> how do I be like, get off of me? Like, right? Or I'm like, this is so awkward. <clears throat> so that feeling, I imagine, and this is little, very, very little. I exactly, mean, yeah. Versus your boss or someone you're that's headlining a show that you're there mm -hmm. you know what i mean if someone if he puts you in that position what would you do i mean i didn't know what to do with and i have mrs teach next to me she had no idea um i actually ended up just pretending i was gay um which <laughs> didn't really help because then she was like let's go dance and i'm like later girl <laughs> i'll find you okay <laughs> So yeah, it was bad. I had no idea what to do. I had no idea. And meanwhile, Miss Titch is right. Miss Titch, Mrs. Titch, Miss right Titch, <laughs> Miss Titch. Um, and, and she gets the drinks, and I was like, "What the hell?" I'm like, "Did you not see this girl?" She was like, "What are you talking about?" I was like, "She was dancing on me. You didn't see that?" She was like, "Why didn't tell her fuck off?" I was like, "I Dude, didn't know how oh to my God. do that." Like, so two years ago, it's funny that you say that because uh. Two years ago, we went to this music festival in Dallas called Lights All Night, and it was day two, mm. and, and this was when I, I had a broken foot, and I was on my crutches and stuff. You're always um, I'm in always, pain at... Last time you told me it was your tooth when you were... Yeah, that, that was at the same <laughs> festival, yeah. Oh, so, fuck. So, yeah, I was just a mess while we were out there, and then... Um, <laughs> So I'm there, so I, day two, I decide not to take my crutch, and so I'm there, but I'm kind of limping around. Leslie's in front of me, and it's a music festival, and it's all crowded. We're at the main stage, and we're towards the front, so everybody's moving. You know, you accidentally bump into somebody, whatever. So this chick is, like, dancing next to me, and I'm not paying any mind because it's my favorite group called Flostradamus, and I'm all, you know, I'm trapping, I'm getting into it. She keeps bumping into me. I keep saying sorry because I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to elbow her because yeah. I'm like significantly taller than her. I'm going to, right. you know, I'm doing trap arms and she's going to be in the wake of that. So we're moving around and I'm trying to stay as close as Leslie as possible. 
And because I know she doesn't like a lot of these crowded places or she doesn't like when guys get up on her. So, and I, I don't want a guy to get up and on her right, anyway. Right. So, you know, I'm trying to stay as close as we can, but you know, there's a little bit of separation you know, I have my brace on and everything, which is kind of making my foot extended and you know, and I'm trying to hold onto the rail cause I don't want to hurt my foot. And then, um, this girl ends up kind of getting up in front of me and I kind of get closer to Leslie. She took that as an invitation to turn around and like start trying to like, oh. and I'm like, Oh, Hey, like, <laughs> yeah. no. So Leslie finally, I guess, felt that, like, felt this chick's butt on her butt. Uh Leslie turns around and sees me, like... Yeah. Like, no. So Leslie straight up pushes this chick. He's like, get the fuck away from him. Like, she got lit. Leslie? Leslie. She she gets really defensive or, like, really protective of me. (laughs) And I'm there, like, save. I think I could see that. I was like, save me, mommy. Yeah, yeah. And the girl's like... And she was like, you stay away from my man. And And I'm like... Shit. Oh, hello, right, like, right. baby. Nice. And so then, so then, like some other people, like the people that were kind of around us, they get around. They're, they're asking Leslie, "Are you okay? Are you okay?" And they're telling the girl, "Hey, go away! Like, leave them alone." And so, like the chick leaves. Like she's all like, "Ah, whatever." Whatever. And they're, like so, the chick leaves, and then the guy, the guys, like came up. They're like, "You guys all good? You guys good?" And Leslie's kind of annoyed, so she's not really. I was like, "Yeah, I don't, I don't know." <laughs> like, and they're like, "Yeah, like, like, well, everywhere I go, this happens." Right. <laughs> But no, but Leslie gets paranoid about that. And it's funny because you said, why didn't you tell her to fuck off, Mrs. Teach? <laughs> no, Miss Teach told me that. No, that's what I'm saying. Oh, Mrs. Oh, Teach was like, why didn't you tell her to fuck yeah. off? Like, you that. know, and now that I think about it, she did see me. She did see this happening because I actually, because I think the girl turned around at some point And I tapped Mrs. Teach because we're next. And I was like, help me. Like, <laughs> do something because I don't know what to do. And she just looked at me like... <laughs> like uh deal with it because you need to figure something out and i was like i've never been in this position before like i i really have not i don't now that miss teacher knows about it anyways i don't think so but <laughs> i i don't know that aspect though of uncomfortable um not trying to embarrass the other person I can see i mean mm-hmm. I, and you know what that is kind of a scary thing and that's kind of very disheartening to think that half of our population has or will go through that you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like mine was like a funny specific case that just kind of weirdly like the happened. opposite type thing which right is, which is always looked at as the comedic way like if the girl is sexually harassing the guy or right like think of like horrible bosses is a perfect example right. where charlie day's character is yes. being harassed by jennifer aniston Yes. And like, you know, and, you know, cause most people would be like, well, if my, if my boss was hot and you right. know, did that all right. right. Or the teacher. Yeah. And right. so it's like, you know, but that Charlie Day's character was uncomfortable cause he's married. Right. In the movie, I think I've only seen it once. But either way, yeah. like he, like he doesn't feel comfortable with it, but it's looked at as comedic aspect I think he of is it. Married, yeah. But, um, but you know, but like, of course, if it's the other way around, if a movie, per, you know, depicts that kind of thing. Oh, it's, it's a drama. It would be like a... Yeah, it'd be like a crazy, like, oh. But the thing is, is that I guess it's because it, it's... The norm. The comedic is because it's the rare instance where that never, you never see that. Mm-hmm. And it's funny to, it's satirical to do that versus if you were to do the one that happens all the time, it's actually very dark. Exactly. And, you know, kind of horrific. Wins so, Oscars. And it's like... right. And I'm not, that's not a dig at that. It's, I mean, that is, that's, that fucking sucks. I don't know. Um, so as a guy, I mean, that's, what do you do with that? You know, like, um, I don't know. And and also I found myself a lot with this, this Louis C.K. one, which makes me feel like shit. Cause I went, I was about to say it hit me hard, but it was like, I felt personally victimized in the sense that this is my favorite comedy. You know, this is by that an extension of myself and how can someone or how could he and then when he came out and was like yeah this this was because i heard about it before he did the statement too mm-hmm. and then i was like oh fuck i was hoping i was hoping this was wrong i was hoping louis k you're gonna fight this right because he right. didn't do this you know you're gonna fight this no he fucking did it and it's like wow like you know even yeah. our people that we look up to and this and that you never know who it could be you never know and mm-hmm. apparently it's a lot and most of them it seems like like mm-hmm. i don't know but then um but yeah i mean it, it all boils down to consent which you think is something that's kind of universally universally taught because i don't know like it's it's you can't really say it's the way somebody is raised but it's like i know like i know me personally like like, I, w- I was very bad 
like, um, before I met Leslie, like, a year or so before I met Leslie, I was kind of a player. I was a fuck boy. Like, I'll call myself that. Like, I was bad. Like, um, I never did anything. I don't think, I don't feel I did anything that was over the line. I would hit on a lot of girls. I'd be like, hey, you know, and, you know, if they, if they showed any type of attraction towards me, any type of feelings for me, I would really capitalize it. I would, you know, I'd be like, oh, hey, yeah, well, let's hang out. Let's go on dates and stuff. And, like, oh, well, I mean, I'm in between jobs. I don't have money and stuff. Like, kind of like the girl. You know how the girl plays the guy just to get free meals and stuff? Mm. I was the opposite. I was the guy playing the girl to get free meals and stuff. Oh, nice. And, like, and so. Well, if, that's not yeah, nice. Yeah, it's I not. Yeah. But, and so, like, you know, and I would do it because in high school I only dated one girl. And I always hear my guy friends say, like, oh, yeah, bro, I hooked up with this chick. I hooked up with this chick at this party. And now, you know, and I was kind of feel like, man, I wish I was that kind of guy. I was like, no, the, I'll never be that guy. I'll never be it turned into that guy yeah and you know it was terrible you know but it but a lot of people because a lot of the you hear these things like at parties and stuff oh it's rape this this, and that i never i'd only gotten drunk once at a party but that was when i was single not talking to anybody and two the girls like i would talk to or do stuff with they were sober as well so i know Mm -hmm. there was no none of that issue and then you know but it's I forgot what exactly was going on this, but oh, the whole consent thing is like, I knew even if I did have any type of influence, you know, anything like that, I knew if I was ever told no, whether it be playful, whether it be not, I would kind of always be like, okay, like, okay, I'm going to kind of draw back because as soon as they said no, that's always tripping in my mind. Stop, stop, stop. Like whatever. Like even when Leslie and I first started dating, we'd be doing the fooling around and stuff. She'd be like, stop it. I'd be kind of like, okay, okay, whatever, I would leave, and then they would initiate, you Even know. now, yeah. It, Even it's, now, yeah. Yeah, it's, it, yeah. yeah, it's like, it's it's scary, you know? And I guess, because <laughs> like, you always hear about these things on TV, whoa, they didn't say anything, or they were liking it. it it's right. always that kind of thing, it's like, I would never see my, I can never imagine myself in that position, you know? It's like, how do, how do guys not get the hint? Like, if somebody's saying, no, stop, you're scaring them, What what is it that it's like, Oh, they like this. I'm gonna keep doing it because I can't. I can't see myself that way. I don't. I'm pretty sure you can't see yourself that way either. So it's like you know, with these whole things, and I don't know. Is it the position of power? You know, where it's like Louis C.K. jerking off in front of chicks. Like, is it like you know, I'm a comedian. I've made it far. Like, you need to do this. Like, like you know, the whole Harvey Weinstein. You know, executives in Hollywood. Oh, you wanna you wanna be in these films. You wanna do these things. You gotta touch my dick. You gotta do this, this, and that. It's like, I don't know what it is that to make guys think that like the whole consent thing like no is no no means no that's what i've always heard i used i don't i had a similar i had a similar kind of thing i was very opportunist i was just i would say i would call myself i was very opportunistic with <laughs> sex if if i could i would you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. regardless if i was dating someone or whatever i just because why not and i was young i was like fuck it i don't care um, and I was in a different city and then, you know, blah, 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 blah. I was going through shit. So, um, but I, I had a, it wasn't really a girlfriend, but we are always around the same people and we were always at the same parties. And it's interesting now because I don't think it would fly the same way nowadays, but we, she, she got off on like the chase of it. Mm-hmm. She really did. And, and we never dated like formally, but we always ended up at the same, like if we ended up at the same parties without because sometimes we would bring people, so then it was like, oh, okay. But if we weren't, it was like, okay, right? Like, we're going to do this, right? Like, And the thing is, is that she... She wouldn't say, like, no, right? But there was this aspect of, like, I'm not doing that. Like, we're not doing this tonight. We're not blah, 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 right? But it was like this... It was like this... We knew. Like, it was... She did that because she was like, I'm not doing this unless you convince me to. Like, right. you yeah. know, like, unless you're really on your game tonight. You know, unless <laughs> wait, you... Wait. Right? Um, which now I, I, now I'm like kind of scared. I mean, I'm not scared about it because it's that we, I know we're actually, so I haven't faced her, but, um, <laughs> she's in South Dakota. It doesn't matter. But, um, that could be that scenario where, I mean, if I played it the wrong way or, cause it would be like, I'm not doing this. It would be a lot of push, a lot of push, a lot. And she honestly, maybe I sound like a dirtbag cause I guess, do I really know? I mean, no, I mean, this is, I mean... It really was, though, because she enjoyed this kind of push aspect, this kind of, like... The hard-to-get dark, type thing, like... Of her, her playing hard-to-get, yeah. and me really pushing on it and really being... And I would play a guy that I wasn't really that type of guy, but I was very alpha... I mean, I'm not very alpha male at all, but with her and, and 
you know, at the time, whatever, because I knew she got off on her, whatever. That's how it was. Mm -hmm. So I feel like now that really was a genuine case because we never had a problem. We, you know, we did have sex. We had sex, and there was no aspects of like, well, he made me do it, or an embarrassment thing, or whatever. We both had this understanding of we're not really dating. We just kind of like to do this cat and mouse thing. And fuck buddies, so right? Like, you know, it really was that way. But I feel like that's where the line gets blurred because some. I feel like maybe a guy like Louis K or whoever these guys have that interaction with the female at some point too. And then the next girl, when they're doing the same thing, they're like, oh, I know what she's doing. She likes it like the girl before her, the way I, she wants me to really, really push and really, man, that'll get her into it. And they're like, no, I really don't want you to do this. You know, yeah. like, to know, it's a firm no. And they're like, no, but I know how she would tell me that too. And we would have great sex. So I'm just going to keep, so I don't know. I could see that plain. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. As, in a scenario. Not that that excuses me. Yeah, no, no, I'm no just it saying, doesn't. Yeah. Like, that's where it gets blurred, too, because, I don't know, it's, it's sex is just very complicated. Um, I've also had, and I, but at the same time, no was a no. I, I had a girl that was, another girl, it was actually, I was actually dating her when I met Mrs. Teach. I was actually dating both of them um, <laughs> for about a week, and then I dumped her to be with Mrs. Teach. But <clears throat> when we first had sex... I mean, we, I, I snuck out of my parents' house, I took their car, you know, I pushed it out the driveway and dry and neutral or whatever, you know, and started in the, so that I wouldn't wake up, I snuck her back in the house and, you know, we like went down each other for like all night, whatever. And then like, when we were about to do it, she was like, stop. And I was like, uh, I was like, are, are you serious? Are you sure? And she's like, could you just, and I'm like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you don't know, gotta tell I'm me not, twice. Right, right. I'm like, uh huh. Yeah, we'll stop. And to me, but see, that was a genuine like. No, I think yeah. You know, I could tell she was more or less just not sure or fell the way about it. Just like the I'm other stuff, maybe like versus the other uh, girl was like. I mean, we did it. We did that every time. It was like a. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't know. I just. You, you never know what's going through people's minds at it, and it's like it, it sucks you know, for women that have to deal with it. When I don't know, it just, yeah, it, no, like, no, there should be no woman that feels like you know the whole, the whole kind of a concept or stereotype. Like, like you, you always see it in like movies or TV shows. Well, she got the promotion because she is banging the boss, or this right, is that, or right. she's blowing the guy. You know, you you always don't want. You always hope that it's not really the case. You know, in real life situations, but. It is, and it's like it what, really is. and it's like, and what do we need to do to stop it? Which I it think it looks like yeah. this is happening. I mean, this is for me. It is. I mean, just this understanding of how much it goes on, and Hollywood becoming more transparent is kind of transparent is kind of eye opening and for myself. I mm-hmm. mean, it really is. Like, no, for sure. Yeah. And it, it re- this really now this is a better segue into the uh, to the main topic that I was going to bring up uh, is, is regarding consent is. Um, I discovered an article or heard about an article that we read just before we started recording where the uh, Girl Scouts of America, they, they, I don't know if it was like something on their blog or like what exactly it was per se, but they posted an article pretty much talking about how, um, if girls get gifts, um, during either the holiday times, birthday times or whatever for family gatherings and stuff, um, it, it's apparently, you know, we're setting up a false expectations for girls. Or not a false expectation. I'm, I'm trying to. I'm losing my wording, but the whole thing of um, if you get a gift, like when you're in your parents or somebody says, "Well, go tell them thank you and give them a hug and this and that, give them a kiss and stuff like that." That's kind of teaching girls that it's okay that like it's you're kind taking of a, away their consent more or less. Exactly, you're telling them how to show affection, who to show affection to, and for what. Right. Like the whole like, oh well, they got me a gift. I'm I'm conditioned to show physical affection as a thank you. Right. Uh, to them and this is and that and that's why they said more specifically during the holidays because Christmas time you open gifts oh who got you that oh Uncle Johnny oh well give go go give Uncle Johnny a hug kiss tell him thank right. you and stuff so it's like it, you it, know Uncle Johnny likes when you sit on his lap so go it, exactly <laughs> so yeah and it's like you know there could be the creepy uncle the creepy cousin like there could be whatever yeah. so it's like and the the main the main thing how I heard about this article was making it sound like the Girl Scouts of America which is kind of disturbing yeah. It's like the uh, I was listening to the Billy Madison show and oh, I wasn't gonna that. name it, but okay, yeah, it's like whatever, <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I was like, who cares? Yeah. So, 
they they were saying they were taking it as that the Girl Scouts of America, and this is kind of the way I was perceiving it. Where at first I was like, well, yeah, I was like, that's not shitty. I was mm-hmm. like, it's terrible. They're saying like you're bad parents if you tell your kids to go tell them thank you or give your family members a hug, and they weren't bringing up the whole can like the consent thing, so to speak. They were just saying that they were taking it as they didn't say they were taking it as they were saying that the article stated that you're a bad parent if you teach that. And they're making it this movement also that it's like everything that you did as a kid is now wrong. Mm-hmm. Like, we're, you know, that's kind of a, a, a scheme you see with a lot of things where it's like, remember how you did this? So now it's wrong. And, you now know, it's not PC. Now right. it's not the right we're thing to do. We're all becoming so overly sensitive as a culture. And mm-hmm. it's really not that case. Like, like, I can see it. And like what I was talking with Teach about earlier is like, so after really reading the article, reading the actual thing, I see exactly where it's coming from. I see that whole correlation of... I've been conditioned, oh, like, oh, this person bought me a dinner. Like, if they get older, start going on dates and stuff. This person bought me dinner. We're more mature now. What's a more mature way to say thank you right. with physical affection? Oh, sex. And or, I'm supposed to. Yeah. And yeah. it's like how, you know, I'm, I have to tell them thank you in some right. way, shape, or form. Right. And it's like, you know, and, and just what you were saying, like, well, when we were kids, it's different. Now it's wrong or whatever. It's like when it – me personally, with my family experiences, um, I was always told just to say thank you. Not so much like go give them a hug or anything like that. Now, I – like I was saying, I don't know if it, whether I was told to give hugs to my family members. Like if you walk into like uh, you know holidays, again, correlating with that, with Thanksgiving coming up next week. Um, you know, I, I always saw my family members always hug everybody when they go into a house or like for holidays or when they leave and tell them bye and everything. So I always did that. I never – I was never told by my parents to go hug someone or hug a family member. And, um, I never saw my brother or my sister ever do that. And I never saw them, you know, get uncomfortable with hugging or showing affection to our family members. Cause we were family, mm-hmm. um, you know, on both sides, my mom and it my was dad. Very organic, exactly. And so, and then that's something the article pointed up, pointed up too was that it was like, well, what if there's a family member you feel uncomfortable around mm-hmm. and you're kind of being forced to say, you know, go hug them and this, this, and that, which I agree. I mean, if your if your child tells you, I don't feel comfortable doing that, I don't want to do it, don't force them to. I mean, it it directly looks like it's like as a child, the whole world is really just your family, mm-hmm. and having the whole world being your family. So you're with someone, you know, some relative ex who gave you a certain gift, um, and you're not comfortable reciprocating the gift you know uh the kiss or a hug or some you know form of touch or whatever you're just not comfortable maybe they haven't done anything either but you're just not comfortable in that sense doing it um so you don't want to and you shouldn't have to but your family um also representing society is telling you no you that's how this works yeah you need to do that um now you're grown and your family is not the only people in the world now now it's all the world and same thing this boy or whoever this date bought you a nice meal and this and that but you still just kind of feel uncomfortable you don't want to do anything with them but the rest of us go well he was a nice enough guy this is what you should do this is what you know you're going to put out right and then it's like now again that pressure comes from from the outside in going well this is the the way you should have gone you know you're supposed to act in that sense And, and it's not right so you start with the mid. You start from the bare bones as as a family. You don't feel comfortable. Okay, well you you know. And the article said you're not gonna be disrespectful. You're gonna you know you have to tell them thank you at least. Look at them and tell them thank you. But that's really all you are. <laughs> and that's uh, yeah. Needed I mean, that's to all, do. Yeah, it's like and you know. And I was just talking about it with Leslie. But again, in the negative connotation. You know, before actually reading the article. Now, and it's good, it, we should note that when you came in, you were all for the the latter of being that it was because it was also some, some aspect of like that boys are okay. Yeah, with, that like oh well, it doesn't like it's because only about that's the what girls. you heard though. Because yeah, that's just what they were that's talking how about. It was presented. And when I heard it, I was like, "That's this is a really good article. I should bring up yeah. with Teach on Wednesday." And so yeah, because the way the way the Billy Madison show were spitting it, it was that that um that. It's only for the girls because it's the Girl Scouts of America that posted it. It's like, oh, only teach the girls consent. But, oh, if your boys are uncomfortable with hugging somebody or this is not, who cares? Let and they just kind of spun that up because the article says nothing about it. It doesn't. It, it, doesn't kids. It, it just, just says, says children, yeah. kids, you know, anything right. like that. So it's like, 
Really, I, they know their audience, and they knew how to get a rise out of them. Is exactly, really and it, they work. Yeah. Got, I was like, hey, I was like, that's shitty. So right before I came over, I was telling Leslie, I was like, oh, yeah, because Leslie and I was like, well, what are you guys going to talk about today? And I was like, well, this is an article you I didn't read. You tell her you should go listen to it? I, I do tell her. I was like, well, you can wait yeah. to listen to it when it comes out. But um, I was telling her, I was telling her about that, and she was like, yeah. She goes, <laughs> she goes, how does that make you a shitty parent? And I was like, exactly. I was like, by telling them, I was like, telling them to go say thank you? I was like... I was like, how is that shitty? I was like, how how does that make you a terrible parent? And then, because then we were talking, I was like, well, I was like, when we have kids, we're going to teach your kids to say thank you. And she was like, yeah, yeah. But we weren't so much talking about the whole hugging part because that's what they were making it that like the Girl Scouts are were bet were punishing you for saying thank you. More or less, uh, yeah. Again, changing your childhood, changing the way you did things as a kid versus. how you're gonna, you know, how society sees it now and how it's wrong, and, and you know that gets rise out of everyone because mm-hmm. every generation looks at the last generation is like, oh, this is where you fucked up, you know. So mm-hmm. it gets it gets good ratings, I guess, or it gets people amped, but it's it's not right. I had before you, the Girl Scouts things I hadn't heard about, but a while back, someone, a friend of mine who has a kid, had posted an article about like such things as like not forcing your kid, boy or girl, and it wasn't in aspects of Christmas or holidays. It was just like. We really shouldn't be telling our children to, especially just random adults who just friends, just random friends you bring around, not to go up and hug them right away, like because they don't have to. And if they're kind of what was the word we looked up today? I forget. Redescent, redescent on um, going up to them or whatever. Shouldn't force them because that fucks with their consent as a kid. I exactly. mean, it's just as a person. You're, yeah, you're your other parent, and they're gonna do what you say, but. You're trying to teach them good having, you know, because when they get older, that sticks with them. You know, oh, I'm uncomfortable, but I always had to do it anyway, so I'm just going to do it. Versus letting them sit with, like, you're uncomfortable, you don't have to do anything. (laughs) You know what I mean? And that's okay as a child. So when you grow up, you're like, I'm uncomfortable. Well, I was never forced to do anything, so I'm okay with just sitting with this uncomfortability and and then dealing with it as an adult. Versus, well, I was always conditioned to have to do something, so I'm going to do something. Another one was, uh, I guess it's not, I don't know if it's a thing now, but I remember as a kid, parent, you know, older people being, calling them your boyfriend or your girlfriend, like in a cute way. And it's an affectionate way where it's because it's so outrageous, obviously it's not right. true. Um, but at the same time with things the way they are nowadays where some adults take advantage and this and that, you, you don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't, yeah, don't let them do that. Don't, uh, don't let your kids think that's okay. And you know, you they're not your boyfriend and girlfriend, <laughs> right. you know, um, cause you know, it's all, I, I remember a friend, my sister's friend's mom used to call me her little boyfriend mm-hmm. and, and she, I mean, she never touched me or nothing. It wasn't nothing bad, but that was a thing. It was just a cute kind of thing, which it was no big deal, but you know, in some other form or whatever that has gone awry. So you right. really shouldn't, shouldn't do that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean. Yeah, like, you know, uh, again, saying it again, you know, I agree with the article now when I actually got to read it. Mm. And, you know, and that brings a good, a good point, too. It's like, you know, um, the whole... Fact check. Yeah, it's like hearing hearing something from one source, fake news. Fake news. And then um, going on and actually reading it and like, oh, wow, you know, what do you know? Like, oh, this is what it actually is. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think... Um, and that kind of stuff, too, can definitely be misconstrued nowadays, especially with that whole phrase, fake news being thrown around around so much. It's like... Everything's kind of fake news. Everything. Exactly. Because I was just going to come in here and just talk about it, you know, without actually reading the article. Yeah. But then I'm glad, you know, like, well, like, well, what all did it say? And I was like, you know what? Let me bring this fucking thing up. And I was like, oh, 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 Ooh, wow. Good stuff. What good do you stuff. know? Redescent. Yeah. Redescent. Redescent. That's a good word, too. I like that. Oh, yeah. A new one to me. I was like, we're learning on who cares. I'll be using so. it all day tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I'm redescent on taking this test. That exactly. At 9.30 tomorrow. <laughs> I just got uh, two more days, uh, Thursday and Friday, and I'm done with the week. Oh! Oh, yeah. And I'm leaving work early on Friday because I'm just like, nice. I'm done. I'm like I'm done. I'm so glad. Like Friday, Friday works out. So this whole week, I've been given, I've been getting a lot of time off the phone. Like I'm just like, oh thank God. Like working in a call center, I'm just like I pray for time off the phone. Like, 
like oh i always like oh it's not busy hope it's not busy hope it's super slow come just like even though that's my job i know you like the phone so that's i do like there there's customers that i talk to that like if they start off angry you know if they come off the phone well, most customers are angry anyway yeah and if i'm able to le- like legitimately legitimately genuinely help them they understand they're like you know what well yeah let's leave my policy as is thank you for the info Take that time with them, okay. But if it's just, ah, and that's I'm yelling loud and I want what I want. Exactly. I'll yell louder until I get what I want. Exactly. And that's eighty percent of the call volume. Yeah. And it's mostly why did my bill go up? And so it's like you know just dealing with that twenty four seven. That can be really like, and I'm like I'm like I'm licensed. I could be technically be doing something with you know less work for more pay. I'm like, uh, are you are you second tier? What do you mean by second tier? Are, um, what was the term? I forget the terms for it, but are you, when they call the 800 number, is it you? So you're getting them, are, you, are they filtered through, you're getting the really shitty calls? I mean, they're all shitty. We're, we're I mean, like, yeah. they've already, because you know, that second one's even worse, because once they get the first one, like, I can't help you, let me get you someone that's licensed. And then... <laughs> yeah, well, because um, cause the position I'm at, we can do policy changes, we can do uh, payments, ID cards, documents, yeah, yeah. We're pretty much, and then also the other bulk of our calls are agents calling in for us to do their shit. Right. But um, but it really all all the company does, all we do, is that most things, most problems that need to be corrected, we send off to processing, which is an off the phone team. All they do is just work on these stupid little requests because they have capabilities to go in and backdate things or whatever. Mm. Or to, and because our systems are so – they're not old school. We do have updated technology, but the actual systems you work on the policies with, they're not outdated, but it's just like you can only make one change a day. So it's like – and I don't know how many times where I'm like, okay, yeah, I already – so I either deleted it out of that vehicle. I did this, this, and this. Anything else I can help with? Oh, yeah, I also needed to make this change on my policy. Sorry, max out <laughs> on changes. Like we already yeah. saved one change, so now i got to send this. It's going to take five business days for it to get completed. Mm. Yada, yada, yada. And that could be really aggravating too. Yeah. Um, not just for the customer service representative, you know, but for the member as well. That's why you have a rage thing, I think, because it's all pent up throughout uh, the yeah. day and they just burst out. Like, I don't know. Well, I'm I, like, that like, job had so much. I mean, I'm not like, I'm Buddhist, but I'm not very woo woo kind of like mm-hmm. weirdly about it. But when I say that job had a lot of energy. In it, I mean, I'm serious. There was a lot of buzz in the in that office with phone with people being just ornery all the time. Eighty percent of them pissed off, pissed off, pissed off. I couldn't do it. I totally had to like distance. Like, yeah. so for you to be doing it for however long you've been doing it and continue to do it, I mean, no one. It's like, it and then out. I take like hour long calls, forty five minute long calls, because like I'm there to like help them out on their policies. Or even if they're screaming and yelling at me, they're telling me "fuck you." Yeah. They're saying "fuck your company." This, and I'm like. Look, do you want my help? And I, I get to the point where I don't know. Like, I just got my second round of quality back, and I got 100% all across the board. No uh-huh. feedback, no no dings, no nothing. You're doing excellent, which I don't know how. And I keep getting compliments on my tone of voice and my willingness to help because I feel like I'm a sarcastic by asshole. By the company? Yeah, well, by these people that review my calls, uh-huh. like the quality people. And so – um, and it's like – I'm like, damn. I'm like – well, I'm more, I'm more sarcastic and everything with agents – and like I tell agents, like if an agent calls and oh yeah, go, could you send could you send the ID card to the member? I'll be like, why can't you do it? Like oh. I, I'll tell them that. I'll be like, I was like, we have the same system. Why can't you do it? Well, um, I, I was like, do you have the policy open up in front of you? No. I'm like, are your systems down? You you know what? I'll go ahead and take care of it. And I'm like, okay, have a great day. Click. Oh. Like I'm just like, I'm just like, no. I'm not made for that because I'm like, yeah, I can do it. I'll do it. I was like, you're a fucking agent, <laughs> like. But the agents, they can't backdate changes. Mm-hmm. Like, they can't go past 30 days, but we can go up to, like, I think six months. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, okay, so that, I know that's their system limitation. Like, okay, we can change it. But then they start doing, oh, well, can you tell me why this is this? And I'm like, well, it's because of this. But then, while I get mad at the agents for calling in, it's just, we call them agents because it's someone from the agency calling. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's like the little front, like, receptionist or a little secretary uh... that just kind of... They were given that to like, hey, there. call service and right. and do this, and then when we start explaining things to him because we think we're talking to an actual insurance professional, right. we start using the lingo. Oh yeah, UMPD is this. Da, da, da. Um, can you explain what that means? And, I'll, and then you know we get like, well, what do you mean? Like, we so are they not supposed to do that then? 
send their receptionist to call? I mean... I don't know what their guidelines are on that. Uh, like, we still verify them as agents as long as they verify the name of the customer, their agency code, like the producer number. Oh, Then yeah. we can we can go over them and we can make yeah. changes with them and stuff, but it's You're like... You're not technically qualified to know any of that. Exactly. Right? So it's like... So it gets annoying where we're like, oh, yeah, we got to do... Well, why can't you just do this? Because we can't do that. It's not guidelines. Right. It's like, ask Whoa. your agent. <laughs> ask, like, the, ask your boss. Ask, yeah, like, ask, they know. I'll like, ask your neighbor. Like, they know. <laughs> So it's like, yeah, so it's just like, and that's why, like, I want to move up, like, um, if I, if I do, you know, hopefully there's positions out there within my company that I can move up so that way I'm off the phone, so that way I could teach other people, because mm. I'm very good at teaching people, like, I learn mm -hmm. things quick, mm -hmm. and I like helping people out, because I know insurance is very tricky, like, I, I struggled with it when I first started learning it, I was, you know, able enough to get really adapted to it you know I, i'm licensed now you know like it, it's a bitch insurance is a bitch it is. and so it's like you know and i know because this position the position of my at is for like intro to insurance pretty much like they go through the in the insurance basics and training and everything and so um there's people that really don't comprehend it there's people that when we hit the floor in my training class they straight up walked out because they're like this is too much mm -hmm. like I don't understand this. I don't get it. I'm failing. I feel like I'm drowning. There's people that leave because they don't get it. There's a learning curve. Exactly. And so it's like, and then when I'm able to, because I'm able to explain things to people that are like, oh, okay, okay. And that's what I love those types of calls, you know? Mm -hmm. So if I can go into training or try to be like a leader or something like that, where I can help people, awesome. But it's like, um, and then because if the longer you're on the phones, because then if you get moved up to property training, you get less calls because you're, since you're property trained, you want to have a little bit more availability for property calls to come in. Um, and so it's like, okay, that's cool. But then once you hit to MCR four, that's the actual license rep. That's like 24 seven back to back calls every single day. Cause it's more complex situations mm -hmm. where you actually got to use your license for a change. <laughs> it's like, yeah. So it's like, I want to move up to the less calls, but I don't want to move up to the, cause the MCR fours get paid very handsomely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, you know, they get hmm, top notch. And I'm like, I like that pay, but not the calls. Right, right. It's like, but I don't know. But yeah, this week I've been giving a lot of off the phone time. And nice. I'm like, oh. nice. Like, but then I'm just, cause I'm, and like, it just works perfectly because I have all this stuff to look forward to to the weekend. And I'm like, man, less calls I take, the oh, faster. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh my God. Shit, Mrs. Teach gets off all next week for Thanksgiving. Yeah, I'm true. so fucking jealous. <laughs> you gotta work. So to, being an adult. And then today, too, I was, all, I was all in my feelings about, you know... You know, it's my jerk of the week. She actually... I mean, great person. I mean, she, great person. Well, fuck. She's she, a jerk. She called me in the... I mean, she was like, let me talk to you real quick. And I was like, oh, fuck. I really knew because it's all... And it's interesting because I've worked for this company a year before she got there. And this lawyer has never had a problem with the filing until she got there. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like... To me, it's very obvious, but obviously, the lawyers don't give a shit. They just want to bitch at someone. He doesn't even really care. Anyways, she pulled me and was like, yeah, I need to tell you something. And she told me about what had went down. And I was like, okay, whatever. Like, I'm like, I don't see him anyways, and that just sucks. I'm like, okay, well, there's nothing I can do. It's not like I talked to him. It's not like I can go up to him and be like, hey, you know, this is what really happened. He's not even believing because it the parallel. And he's probably not going to have time for it either. He's yeah, like, he don't give a shit. He's just he's here. done with it, right? As soon as he got mad at it or whatever, he he was done with it. Um. So anyway, she was like, "Well, so if you could like you know get all of his filing done, you know, because he's already kind of in a mood." Or I'm like, "Yeah, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll do his filing first before all the other ones." As soon as that happens, I go to start doing it because uh, there's shit. There is. Like six, seven lawyers, mm -hmm. and they all have a paralegal, and there's a ton of people, right? That each one of them, some days I have nothing to do because they're all taken care of, and then other days everyone needs me to do some fucking project. Anyways, today, as soon as I go to fix this um, filing, because I'm like, well, he's kind of upset with me, so I need to do something about this. Another one who is actually higher than him, his he's a partner, like his name is in the name of the company. No. Yeah. Um, the other one who's older than him, who got him into it, so he has priority, he, his paralegal came and said, so do you like to drive? And I was like, no, not really. She's like, well, I need to go to Kerrville. I had to go to the Kerrville courthouse to get a document 
Um, cause he had to and get it certified and he had to do it in person. So I had to drive all the way to fucking Kerbo. It's an hour out there. Like, Did you get reimbursed the gas for it or? So. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Was, uh, by Mocos. Um, <laughs> uh, I drove all the way over there and they said, get your mileage. And I was like, okay, whatever. So I did my mileage. I was like, it's probably been like 10 bucks. I don't know. Like, I was like, what do they give you? Like 10 cents a mile or something? Um, 77 bucks for oh, the wow. trip plus you know plus i was on the clock so i got paid to just drive for three hours like because once Kerrville's so small so i love the courthouse because i just went in they were even like nice san antonio courthouses all of them they everyone hates their lives like no one wants to talk <laughs> to you no one wants to help you i'm like i tell them right when i get there i'm like i'm a file clerk i don't i was sent and i i always when i leave i'm like write it all down because i don't know what the fuck i'm talking about because I go there and go, I was, I'm a file clerk. I don't know any of this. This is what they gave me. They said, this is what you need <laughs> to get what I need. Because I don't really know. I'm just doing this. And then they're, you know, San Antonio people are always pissy. They're like, well, do they have this? And I'm like, it should all be on the paper. Because I told them. <laughs> this every, is the extent of my knowledge. <laughs> they sent me here knowing that I knew nothing. And put. they said, everything on this paper is what you need. So do you see it there? Like, oh, okay, I guess it's right here. Blah, blah, blah. This lady at Kerbo was all, hi, how you doing? I'm like, I'm not in San Antonio anymore. <laughs> like, I really am not in San Antonio. <laughs> like, I can tell. Man. Anyways, but so, that was I'm like, can I go to Kerbo every day? Shit, that right? was a nice Shit, little so bonus. Hell <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. When I, I remember the nicest thing, because when I was at Walmart, especially the part manager, I, always, I was always sent to different stores. Mm. I was like, I was barely in my own store. And then there was one time, it was the shittiest thing ever, but I, I was so happy with the, the money. Because I don't know if it's still true, but um, my store was doing 50 cents a mile. Uh-huh. And so, something like that. And then I went to, I went to San Marcos. Because it was after they got flooded out, their store, in the Walmart in San Marcos got flooded out or something. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So I had to wake up super early. I had to wake up at 3 a.m. I had to go pick up this employee it, like, because he was also sent down and he doesn't have a ride because he was like, oh, well, I ride my bike to work and I don't and I, I won't be able to go to San Marcos. And they're like, David, you're picking him up. And I was like, I fucking guess. That's it. I was like, so, but I got the mileage for picking him up, too. And then so then we had to go to the store to go clock in to our store, then from our store, go to San Marcos. And then, so not only am I on the clock, and then I'm driving to San Marcos. We got to the parking lot of the Walmart in San Marcos. One of the assistant managers called me. Hey, yeah, you're going to have to come back over here. Oh. Like the store manager wants you over here and is mad you're not here. And I was like, well, she's the one that sent me. Yeah, that's not my problem. Hang that's up. That's bullshit. So that's then, that corporate bullshit. So then I went all the way back to our store. I turned in my mileage at the end of the day. I got 125 bucks. Hey. And I was like, hell yeah. yeah. I took Leslie out that night. And I was that like, point, <laughs> I was like yeah. we're exactly. going out. Because the other times I would go for a store, it would be like 10 bucks, 15 bucks. I don't know like, how those mileage things work. Because I was like, I figured it would be like 10 cents or something. But they even have, I'm wondering if they're doing it like, I don't know, like, because it's like this mileage on the car, not just the gas or whatever. Because mm-hmm. I even had to sign, like, it was like. Basically, I, it was kind of like saying, like, we're compensating this much money for this amount of trip with this miles, and we're done. <laughs> yeah. And I guess it's kind of like, it was like the way of saying, like, so that I'm not like, well, if I ever come back, like, I had a lot of wear and tear on my car because of the job. Like, yeah. It's like the way of being like, well, you were compensated and you agreed to this conversation, so it's done. Yeah. You know, that's how it was, that's how it was with Walmart. Like, like, you had to, you had to, excuse me, you had to put in your, you had to input your odometer before yeah. you do the trip and then the odometer after right and then the little computer does the math and see i don't get how that's a 77 seven dollar trip though i'm like i would have been happier with 10 right. <laughs> i was like i don't know how that game just well they see so when i went to the cash office i turned in the yeah. suite they gave me the money i was like sweet thanks <laughs> Here, me bye. Like, I, I was like, like i will go every time you need me to go I, mean, right. I would love to go to curb i was like you already gave me the money goodbye like yeah. can't talk it now yeah man so work is work work is work <laughs> But I agree with you, dude. San, I think people in San Antonio who work are the most the downtown. Like, well, uh, I don't know if it's a law, it's a a law thing too, because the courthouses are just God. They suck. They just everyone. <laughs> they everyone suck. sucks. Have you ever been to a courthouse? I mean, you I should. went. I went once. Unless um, you're in trouble, <laughs> right? I went once when I actually got called for jury duty, uh, and I went, but then I, I was in college, but I was skipping class all the time, but I was like, mm-hmm. I don't want to do this bullshit. Well, you're in college, so you know. Yeah, so I went, I had to turn in my little thingy, they were like, all right, they signed, the, signed something, gave me right. something, I was like, 
They're like, here, if you're, if you're missing class, here, you can turn this in. I was like, okay. I threw it away in the trash can yeah, as I was walking out. Yeah, I was right. like, I was like, I'm skipping class anyway. I used it as an excuse to get out of school because I was like, oh, I have jury duty. Okay, okay. You're yeah. not going to be marked for these absences. Okay, awesome. And then I was like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm a student. I got to go to class. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you're free. I just went home and like jerked off. and They all fucking suck. Like, oh, fucking. I don't know. Everyone in law, I feel like sucks. <laughs> I always have people like, oh, you're going to like be a lock? Like, do you want to like become a lawyer? I'm like, fuck no, I don't want to do any, any of the, <laughs> even paralegal, because a paralegal, I mean, I could become a paralegal with this job, because I would just have to learn what they learn and put the hours in, and if this law firm, you know, I could stay with, stay with this law firm eventually if they're like, oh, well, Vinny knows what he's doing. Fuck. <laughs> All right, hold on. Okay. Good? Yeah. Are you going to be able to? Yeah, with, with these long pauses, I can, yeah, I can do it. Okay. All right, well, hold on, let long pause again. No, no, <laughs> cut that part out. So yeah, it's like um, I if know. I if I stayed at the job, you know, they they would if if they needed me or if I asked her, they would or could promote me. But I don't. They all seem overworked and overstressed and not paid enough. And I feel like being a teacher is like that too. But at least I will feel like I'm doing what I want to be doing. Mm-hmm. Versus the other ones, just kind of like, well, I just kind of fell into it. There will be a point where we both feel accomplished in what we're doing or I don't know purpose, but, but <laughs> it'll get there yeah you yours know, is like, closer than mine uh, that's, that's what so I hear I was like, that's what I hear but it's like I don't know like I'm just tired of hearing oh you're so good on the phones oh this and I'm like huh, uh, then fucking get me off the phones like no good deed goes unpunished and I was like well then let me show my expertise elsewhere yeah. like I'm, I've been a manager I'm, I've been a supervisor every company I work for like, let me show off my chops here. I'm very creative. Did you get the team after um, Brandon? Didn't you have a team? Yeah, I was the team lead. So when I got promoted at CSG, um, Brandon was a supervisor. Yeah. And his, t- his team lead left or got fired, whatever the case may be. Didn't so Brandon get promoted? He got promoted the same week that I got promoted. So I got promoted from regular representative to a team lead. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, they're like, well, yeah, well, you're going to be Monday through Friday, which I was like, nice, like, but you're going to be on the 2 to 11 team. And I'm like, eh, okay, whatever. Oh, yeah. And I was like, well, I get that after seven differential. That's cool, whatever. Right. And then they're like, well, you're going to be on Brandon's team. And I was like, oh, I know who that is, but I never really talked to him. So then I got to know Brandon. We got really close within that one week because, you know, he's a supervisor and he was like the most. Y'all are both I, we're, he's we're only very a, into it, too, though. Like, y'all knew y'all shit. Exactly, yeah. Y'all. Like, we, we really collaborated on a lot of shit and right. we really made a lot of leeway on it. And he was like, why haven't you been promoted sooner? Like, because we really changed a lot of things around the floor and stuff. And then um, he got promoted to ops manager that same week. Like, I remember that Friday he told me he got promoted. And I was like, what? Like, my first full week. Yeah. And then so I didn't have a supervisor because he was dealing with that stuff. So I was kind of the interim soup. Right. And like, and because I was actually, before I got promoted to team lead, I was actually going to go into something called workforce management where all they do is they just fix schedules all day and just do that. They they get paid more than a TL. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I was going to do that. So I had logins because I was training. I was getting geared up for that. Got promoted on this thing. So I still had all my logins. And they're like, oh, yeah, we'll keep you can keep your logins because, you know, you don't have a supervisor that can help you right away. So I was in charge of, you know, fixing schedules for the nighttime people. I was in charge of doing the uh, supervisor reports for the end of day thing. I was running shit as a yeah, team lead yeah. by myself. And it's like, but they didn't have any supervisor positions opened up. And George got it. George got it. Yeah. And then he became my soup. We crushed shit. Yeah. And then and then um then we got then he went to Haven for Hope at the campus down there. God, that was horrible. Yeah. That place is horrible. And then we got Shelly, which Shelly was amazing, but then um <coughs> but then that's when I started feeling like, damn, I really wanted to be soup. Like I really thought I'd prove myself mm-hmm. on it. And then like not that I had any resentment towards her, but it was kinda like, damn, and then the whole twenty first century, the licensing campaign was mm-hmm. starting to go and I was like that's 15 bucks an hour. I'm like, that would be nice. And I was like, and I'm kind of getting sick of working two to 11 every day. Mm-hmm. I was like, so let me do that. And so yeah, I got my license and moved on up. But then 21st didn't have any supervisors or anything like that. So I was like, I couldn't do anything. And I was only there for like six months at the most. <laughs> Dip that. And then, yeah. So here we are today. 
And now you are a co-host on a very lucrative podcast. Lucrative podcast. Oh yeah, where are we going to do the uh, the contest oh, winners? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to do it online? We can. I think there's like there's a thing where you can. Input there's a random names. name generator. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So if you're listening to the show by this time now, when you're listening. Um, we're Interesting one- enough, I'm pretty sure everyone who liked and shared the page has never listened to any one of our podcasts. Yeah, it was like so. <laughs> Which is funny because did one of our listeners do this? The contest? The listener, the only listener, or only listener that actually listens to the show? My friend from work? Yeah. She doesn't have a Facebook. Oh fuck! Yeah, I was like, so she, so she doesn't. The most the- deserving. <laughs> yeah, the one who actually deserves the prize. Um, so me and teacher were actually joking. We were going to say to find out who actually won, you're going to have to listen to the episode, but <laughs> we know you guys won't. So we'll end the show on the contest winners. And so what? Okay. Not random name generator. Cause that's going to give us, it's going to random name, it was random name picker, random name picker. So we, so kind of a little bit of backstory, which I'm pretty sure if you like the page, you know, uh, teach and I were giving, we we're going to give away two. A ten dollar. We're going to give away to two people a ten dollar Amazon gift card electronically as an e gift, yep. and um, the rules of the the contest were to be entered in. You have to like our Facebook page at uh, Who Cares with David Claire and the Teach. You have to like the page, share the contest post, and then go back to the original uh, post and comment done, like showing that. And then we'll fact we fact checked it to make sure you shared it and did everything make you're sure supposed you're to. Fake news. Exactly. So, and then so the, the contest ended on November 17th, 2017, and we're going to place this on a little bit of a pause to get everything set up. We're going to announce the winners on the episode. Okay. Alrighty. Alrighty. And we're back. So winner number one is Justin. Justin. <laughs> Shout out to Justin, who is the winner of the first gift card, $10 Amazon gift card. Yep. And winner number two is... Zach, <laughs> congratulations to our two winners. Justin you, and Zach. Justin and Zach. You will be given a $10 Amazon gift card, uh, courtesy of David Claire and the Teach. And uh, we will message you, or they by this time they've had messages, you know, on how they'll get them. Mm-hmm. And everything will be taken care of. So, so, yeah, so, yeah, we had that contest. We boosted up our page likes and... Yeah, it was really good and really Next fun time way. we're gonna do Easter eggs in like the show or something. That you right. Have to so. You have to you have to really pick out right. to decipher. You're gonna have to play Or at stuff. least just listen to the episode that we uh announce the names and then call your prize. Like claim your prize. Right, you gotta call us, so Right. And you gotta have ten minutes to do it right now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, well you know, just I was saying you have to play the episode backwards to hear the secret <laughs> message yeah. and yeah. How would you say Justin? You have one. <laughs> That's Justin backwards. Right. right. Oh, I and then, what? Is that backwards? <laughs> I guess you could say. So, yeah. So, well, I do know Zach is, um, our, our follower Zach, he, he is actually, uh, yeah, I know he listens to the is show. Is Zach from CSG? Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. He has the YouTube. I think I watched his YouTube channel. He does. Uh, shout he out has, to Zach. Yeah, shout big, out to Zach. Big Z, he does. Um, big Z. I just watched his episode. It was good. It was a year ago, and you never posted another one, I don't think. Right. Oh, yeah. 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 So um, I, yeah, watched, he, I watched the episode. It was it was good. I liked it. Because he subscribed to our YouTube channel, yes. uh, David Claire and the, t- uh, and the Teach. Um, yeah, he's, um, he's a very avid... Um, um, he works out a lot. He's very uh, fit life oriented and very healthy. Um, you know, and he, he does a lot of motivational things where he, and I feel inspired to, I feel inspired to work out, but do I work out? I don't <laughs> sadly, but yeah, he's really about body positivity and, you know, he's come a long way, you know, uh, when I met him, he, he's lost a lot of weight since I first met him and, but you know, he posts pictures of himself when, you know, from several years ago and yeah, he's. He's really slimmed down. He's gotten really in great shape, and you know he's. And I didn't know that until I saw the mm-hmm. episode. Yeah. Yeah. So and like he's he's a great guy. So um and our other winner Justin, uh, which we did an artist spotlight on. Um, he is the guy that did our theme song, Jay Frenzy. Oh wow! It seems like we're boosting just the people we. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, you but it really I did a random uh, yeah, it was name, a random name picker, picker. Um, but hey you know cool cool 
But you know what? They've been supporting the show since day one, so I feel this is truly deserving. I, yes, absolutely. They didn't, they didn't do it just because of the contest. They've right. Liked us, they liked us since right. then, so... Well, I don't know if Justin listens, but we have been using his... <laughs> all of his music all the time, so... Yeah, so... Here you go. Um, right. Here's payment <laughs> for <all> that. <laughs> reimbursement for the theme song. But, right, uh, right. But yeah, like I said, they'll... By this time, by this point in time, they would have been contacted, probably already getting the gift card, and... Um, just in time for Cyber Monday, yep. um, which is in two weeks, um, or a week and a half now mm-hmm. at this point, mm-hmm. or, or if you're listening to it, it's been past, so whatever. Right, however, wherever in time you are right now. Yeah, who cares? The fourth dimension. Because now we're going into dimensions and shit now, so that's, that's the scope. Do you know what dimension time is? No. It is a specific dimension. It's, it's actually, eight? it's the last dimension we can actually gauge physically before getting theoretical. Is it the eighth? Negative. No, I don't know. That. It's the fourth. Oh, yeah. And did you just say that the fourth dimension right now? Too? I did just say that. Yeah, I did kind of give it away. But you probably thought I was joking or just making some random. I thought you were. Yeah, I thought yeah. you were just saying yeah. like something. Yeah. But. Yep. Yeah, so, I'm also gonna do a supplementary podcast about just all things math. No. <laughs> so I could just talk about math all day. It's like, wow, you're betraying me. Wow. No, okay. no, no. I, I don't. I apparently, apparently, according to my uh, professors, I don't know shit about math. So that's wow. <laughs> how I feel. Although I made a 96 on my Cal 3 exam. And 96, that's almost a perfect score. Like, yeah, pretty much. That's like, pretty, you know. But it's not unfair. a perfect score. It's not perfect. Never. You fucking piece of shit. Yeah, I'm just I don't know shit about math. It's, you, I would have probably gone like a 20. Like, and that's high expectations, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cal 3, believe it or not, is the easy class. Which really? Which is kind of sad. <laughs> yeah. I was like, college algebra was, um, uh, I love college Suicidal algebra. Suicidal to me. College I was just algebra. like... I love college algebra. Calculus 3 is technically the easy class. It's not, but it's the easier one. Proofs is hard. Proofs is... Proofs is dimension shit. <laughs> Start getting weird. Like, what? Super weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but I think that... Yeah, this pretty concludes pretty our out. broadcast day. Yeah, yeah. Um... So probably Teach and I are going to keep talking and drinking. Um, As usual. You know, we preempt every episode with talking and drinking, and then we end an episode with talking and drinking. You you, you know, we're kind of shattering the fourth wall here, you know, because, uh, <laughs> you know, the people like, people listen and go, you know what, I bet they parted ways to give a firm handshake and went home. And, yeah, no, no we, we still talk. You are missing out. Right I had you this. dying last week. When yeah. Talking. Oh yeah. yeah <laughs> Which that yeah. would have been comedy gold on yeah. the episode. That was very out. revealing though of, <laughs> of both aspects of our life. Which you just I just don't want to put out there. No, <laughs> yeah, I was like I, mean, I don't think our female our our females. Oh lord. There's that misogyny it just creeps up, you know. Our partners <laughs> would, Ray, would our, appreciate would appreciate. Yeah. But until next time, I've been David Clare. I'm the teach. Bitch you guessed it! Woo!